Three, two, one, and we're live once again. Welcome to HeroQuest fans. So we've been having some technical issues um, with the stream. I'm trying to do, <laughs> just trying to record my own uh, reactions to the recent news with the Frozen Horror remake for HeroQuest. Um, special shout out to Amalgamash, who has done some great videos recently. Be sure to check him out on YouTube. Um, Amalgamash has gotten the game before me, um, and let's see, he did a reaction to the latest news here. So, yeah, definitely I'm not the first, but this is just my take on things. I do want to remind you that we are doing the rant cast with The Strange Bus here on twitch.tv slash The Strange Bus tonight, uh, starting at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time U.S. until we get tired of it. And like most Fridays, so that's our rant cast. And it's not all negative. We do talk about things we're passionate about, share opinions, uh, but it's all in good fun. So not going after anybody in particular, just um, calling it like we see it. And then we will be having an extra special bonus episode of the rant cast on Tuesday, July 12th, starting at 6 p.m. Central Time, Central Standard Time with uh, special guest, extra special guest, Amalgamash. So that should be a blast. We'll definitely be talking a lot of HeroQuest in the next uh, couple of streams. So hope you enjoy that. Watch out for that. Anyway, um, yeah, lots of opinions are going out there. I just want to say, first of all, just the short version is I'm very pleased that this uh, remake release of the Frozen Horror um, has finally fixed publicly, officially fixed uh, some of the issues that we've been having with it since it was first published 30 years ago. Because most people that buy it are going to have no real connection to the online community, fan community. They're not really going to realize that there's all this stuff. I mean, there's people that are like, oh, I'm keeping myself spoiler free. And they have no idea what's what's up. So I think it was a wise move. I mean, I kind of disagree with what how they executed it, but I mean, I'm not behind the scenes. I don't know how they make their decisions over there at Avalon Hill. Uh, but my thought would be they should have just at least, at the very least, printed up a one-page like list of corrections and suggestions and tuck that into the box so that when people buy it, they would see it right away. They don't have to go on Twitter or check the website or download anything. They would just know right away that, hey, there's a few problems. We've preserved it. Uh, but here's how you, how you fix it. Well, that was not to be. So instead, um, the first surprise was that the Frozen Horror has been released early. And by now, if you're watching this, you probably already know that. But people have been seeing it coming up for pre-order and now for order. Because I vowed that I wasn't going to pre-order the game expansion. I was going to wait until it was a retail product that was just a regular order and get it. None of this waiting around and all that, <laughs> all that mess. Uh, but Amazon was actually shipping it out. So like various people have gotten it. So Joe Kamler did a, an unboxing. Um, Amalgamash has done an unboxing. Lots of other people have commented, posted stuff, posted their own reviews. People at Yield In have shared stuff. So what you're seeing may be nothing new, but this is just my take on it. But anyway... Let me go ahead and read from this a letter that Hasbro Pulse posted up. Uh, Hero Quest, a chilling journey north. Exciting news ahead, gamers. And this is HasbroPulse.com slash blog slash Avalon dash hill slash Hero Quest dash uh dash chilling dash journey dash north. Okay, quote. The Frozen Horror expansion global launch date is August 1st, 2022, though it may be available in your region ahead of schedule. We're so excited for this release that we've put together an introductory solo quest for any hero to attempt, along with additional playtest rules and errata. Here's a deeper look from our favorite designer, Doug. Quote continues, Hear my words, heroes, for the Hero Quest Frozen Horror expansion pack is not an adventure to be trifled with. Many a valiant hero has re not returned from its icy monster-strewn dungeons. Lore Tome has revealed... Uh, a dangerous journey. Whoops, <laughs> lost my place there. I'm just, I'm just paranoid that the stream is gonna 
kick out again. Okay, where was I? Um, Lore Tome has revealed a dangerous journey one hero may undertake to find a lost artifact of great power. Are you up to the task? The quest is calling. The hero quest online quest 2 into the Northlands is a solo quest for any hero. It is designed to prepare them for the powerful threats found in the hero quest frozen horror expansion pack. For Zargon players, this quest gives some suggestions and tools to help scale the level of difficulty desired for their game. It also answers some commonly asked questions and provides errata to some game mechanics that felt more unfair than challenging. The quest includes a set of playtest rules for bringing an animal companion on your solo adventures. A popular archetype in sword and sorcery tales is the friend of beasts. Makes me think of Beastmaster. <laughs> Great cats, horses, hawks, and all manner of small, clever critters have a history of thwarting the machinations of foul sorcerers. We wanted to take this opportunity to playtest some new companion rules and tell a story of how your hero first encountered one of these faithful animals on their journey to the frozen north. Uh, the Avalon Hill team uses an alternative to the roll to move mechanic in our playtesting. We included it in this quest so you could try, uh, try it out. It keeps the drama of rolling double ones, tripping on a loose dungeon cobblestone in combat, but keeps exploring brisk. Cast the far voice spell and let us know what you think. End quote. All right. So that's the uh, that's a little introduction. So I'm happy that this exists. Honestly, I'm more excited. I was more excited to read the Arata than I was to read about this free quest or even the Frozen Horror re-release itself. The unboxings have clearly shown that they really have changed nothing in this release. I mean, yes, it's got extra uh, blue versions of the combat dice and the movement dice. And there's twice as many mercenaries because they don't have interchangeable weapons this time. They're all gray, as expected. There's a blue-tinted um, pad of character sheets included. So there's a couple extras. The box is really big. The frozen horror figure himself is takes up like four squares, like the Dreadnought and Space Crusade, whereas the original was only two. So he's a giant sculpture. The uh, female barbarian, which they just refer to as the alternate bar barbarian, but it's clearly the female barbarian, is obviously a different sculpt than what was included with the mythic tier, uh, which is fine. It resembles very closely the 1992 female barbarian that was included in this pack, except that she's red instead of blue. But that's basically it. It's basically the exact same, except for the usual expected changes, you know, removing the... Uh, Games Workshop stuff, so Chaos is replaced with Dread. Uh, uh, Fimmers are replaced with Abominations. Zargon is always referred to generically. They never say whether he's male or female. It's just the evil sorcerer or whatever. But otherwise, it's all the same. So nothing new has been added. No extra changes inside the quest book. It's all the same. So that kind of made me a little bit uneasy. I'm thinking, oh man, they should have included the errata in the box. They didn't, but this quest, this bonus quest, which is on prominently on the Hasbro website and is going to be everywhere, hopefully, if you fans spread it far and wide, tell your friends, tell your neighbors, tell everybody there are fixes for the Frozen Horror. You don't have to play it as written, because if you do, it's going to be extremely frustrating. I don't care if you breeze through Keller's Keep, Return of the Witch Lord, and your characters are tuned up and ready to go. doesn't matter. If you play it as written, you're going to get destroyed. So, and, and Amalgamash's point, and we'll probably hash this out in the rant cast, was, hey, you're Zargon, you're the GM, you can just do whatever you want. You could always fix it. You could always fix it. Well, I think it's, it's good, first of all, that they admitted that there were problems. And I think it's a great thing that they address them. I mean, I think this is the first official errata that's ever been released for a HeroQuest product. I mean, there were rumors that some stuff was released in the past, but it has not been verified. Um, so this is a good thing. This is a good step in the right direction. And I think it heads off problems where, you know, I don't envy their task. On the one hand, they were probably thinking, okay, let's just keep it exactly the same so that people who were, I mean, forget fear of missing out. 
there were kids back in 92 who tried to order this thing, but it was so limited that they got letters back saying, I'm sorry, this is no longer in production. And yes, there's stories of people going to stores and seeing it and getting it for 10 bucks. There's people, you know, who their dad went on vacation and bought it for them and all this stuff. But a lot of people just end up saying, yeah, I just kept it in the box or I sold it or I played with the miniatures, but I never actually played the, the quests, you know, or I didn't get past the, the solo quests. So a lot of people have not played it. And yes, the, um, the photocopy of the Frozen Horror Quest book has been available on Hasbro's customer care webpage as a scan for a long time, uh, at least 20 years. You know, 2001, I think, is the date of that PDF. So it's been out there, but who's been reading it? Nobody. So we've been hearing about this Frozen Horror probably since September of 2020, and it's finally come out. People have played it and everything, um, but it's, it's pretty much the same as it was. And for 30 years, people have had different workarounds for the various problems in, in the game. But I think it's just so much easier if you're sitting down to play it with your kids, which is really how this, game, how this is meant to be played. You know, it was recommended for eight, nine, ten-year-olds and their their parents. Really, that's, I mean, it says 14 and up, but that's because of pointy swords. Just a safety testing concern in uh, my thoughts. So, yeah, you don't, you want to just be able to take the game out of the box and play. You don't want to have to sit there like an editor and, like, correct everything. And um, you just want to play a simple game, have a good time. And yeah, all of us experienced GMs can turn it into something else like easily. But um, it's supposed to introduce people to fantasy tabletop gaming. And yes, it's an expansion. So you assume that maybe people are a little more seasoned, but not necessarily. The original Frozen Horror, the first three quests were introduced as, yeah, you can play this when you've only got two people and you just you don't want to control four heroes with one person. But they also said it could be a brand new player, a brand new barbarian. He wants to do some quests so he can catch up with the other people uh, in the game who already have like all kinds of equipment and gold and artifacts and stuff. And it's like, oh man, you're setting them up for failure because not only is it super hard for a seasoned player and super random, but you're also going to take a first time player and set them on this dangerous adventure. <laughs> so maybe this is the best way they could have done it. They preserve everything. So those kids who are now grown can open up the box as if it were 1992 again and play it for the first time. And yet <laughs> all those uh, people who are going to be playing it uh, with their kids don't have to worry about you know a huge meltdown when everything just immediately goes south and it was there was no chance for them to survive you know really um, so I think it's good that they released that but I don't know it just as a supplemental document in the box would have been even better so anyway let's uh, let's proceed on because I can just go on and on and a lot of this we're going to cover in the rant cast and really it's not that big a deal to me I'm just thinking of all those other people out there that now benefit from this. So I think they made the right decision um, in including the corrections in some form, at least. Okay, so here we go. All right, so this is going to be obviously spoilerific spoilers all through this. So this is the PDF, and you can see this is a quest. And so this is the new style. They're using this blue uh, instead of, you know, the kind of reddish gray, brown. The Frozen Horror Prelude, a solo quest for any hero. Online quest 2, Into the Northlands. Or the Northlands. Personally, I would think it would make the most sense to have the Barbarian play the, this quest. But in theory, some other hero could play it and then give their gear to the Barbarian. Because he's going to be the one doing the solo quests with no gear otherwise. So you have a chance to get a lot of good stuff. Um, spoilers. So... If you get everything now, you're there's very few rooms that you can get cards like treasure cards. So yeah, you're gonna get some healing potions, a helmet, a toolkit, bracers, a long sword, and the armband of ice, which is a artifact you never got before. It was just a card, and it was in the box, and you just never got it. So you'd have to homebrew it, uh, and then you get 250 gold. 
Now, if you're lucky, you might get some cards from the deck as well, but not very many. So, you know, that's potentially stuff that you could bring to the next uh, couple of quests, and that would make could make a big difference. So let's see. If we finally have a use for the uh, mystery tile, this um, eye of um, mentor, mentor seal icon, and it represents a wolf ally. There's a lot of ice gremlins, but the, the monster body points aren't that bad. I think it's like 32. Well, plus it's only a single monster that attacks you with the wandering monster instead of two. And there's no wandering monster traps this time. They forgot to color the falling block trap in orange. Hog mentioned that on Yield In, so shout out to them. The, the errata of the errata, as they say. So there is a kind of an ambiguity here on letter B. It's unclear if this is just supposed to be like you see like this undead wolf. Is it a character? Is this mummy supposed to be the undead wolf? It's kind of a little bit unclear there. But uh, I'm sure they'll issue a clarification at some point if enough people ask. So Snow Dasher is the name of the... It's, yeah, it's a joke. It's like the reindeer um, Dasher. Yeah, Snow Dasher is the name of the wolf that accompanies the hero on this adventure. So that's something that actually was... Uh, part of the notes, thanks Luca Pashi. Uh, the draft notes for the unreleased uh, Wizard Quest pack is he was going to have a friendly animal. So that's kind of a cool thing that it made it into this uh, quest. And it's Drax Fot Rhyme Breath. So Jack Frost, obviously. There's a boss with four body points. Okay, and here let's get to the part that I really think is good. Okay. So almost all of my complaints were addressed in this. And I know it wasn't just me. I'm just pointing out the obvious. I am i didn't come up with these. Um, anybody that reviews the quest book is going to notice. So they addressed almost all of those issues, which I think is fantastic. It's great. I love it. I'm really happy about that. I mean, I can't express how excited I am that all that is um, publicly acknowledged. So, because there are people out there that when it comes to games, like, they want to read the official rules. They don't want to hear somebody's homebrew house rules, some nerd on the internet. They want to hear from the, the game designers, this is how you should play. Even though the whole point of HeroQuest is to mod stuff and change stuff. I mean, they give you the blank quest at the end for a reason. But, on the other hand, you could say, well, why should the fans have to fix everything why should the fans have to well anyway save that for the rant cast but okay so playing the frozen horror quest pack this is the this is the this is what i came for solo quest yetis yetis are particularly feared for the dreaded hug attack which incapacitates a hero as the yeti squeezes them to death in solo quest we recommend zargon be content pulverizing their foes with meaty yeti fists and leave the brutal yeti hugs to group quests Okay, so that was a really simple solution. Just don't use your power. <laughs> and that would certainly make the quest a lot easier because heroes, I mean, the barbarian tends to get killed either from yetis or from traps, in my experience. It's just, just what it is. Now... According to Luca Pashi's uh, collection there of draft notes, originally the developers were planning, back in 1991 or 92, they were planning to have it so that you would roll two combat dice when you get caught in a hug attack, because the hug is automatic normally. And if you get one white shield, it blocks the damage for that round, and it was only one body point per round instead of two. And if you got two white shields, it would break the hold. You would escape. Whereas in the final version of the rules, there was nothing. You just you just took two body points of damage per round, and the only way you could escape is if another hero killed the monster. So they're just saying don't use the hug until it's a group group quest. Like, okay, that's one way to do it. Now, we had a lot of fun with our house rule, our homebrew rule, where saying you roll three dice. And if you get three white shields, you do a wrestling move and 
not only escape, but you reverse the hold and do a body point of damage to the to the Yeti. And they've got like five body points. So anyway, so I mean, their solution it makes sense. It's simple. It's easy. Um, I guess uh, having to kind of wrestle with them is is more fun. So I think I'm still going to use that. But do my Montalto has volunteered to uh, play the quest with us and just just see what it's like if we just use their suggested rules and not our rules just to see like how much easier or harder it would be so i think it would their solution is definitely easier so that's it's a good one it's a good start and what they're also doing here is which i appreciate is they're setting the stage for zargon to make his own decisions to to realize that hey you know these rules might not be that great now you can get into a problem i mean one hand you've got the rules lawyer saying well don't you know it says here and they start an argument at the table which is the worst thing to do you definitely don't want to do that Um, the other is just people you know whining and trying to convince zargon to just do whatever they want our compromise at the table is to do the uncommon feat thing and just say okay well if you can convince me this is plausible within this universe We'll roll a die, and there's a 50% chance you'll succeed or fail. And we'll just go with it like that. Like, that's how we handle it at our table. But Zargon's the ultimate authority. If he says it, it goes. So you can make the game as complicated or simple as you want. But you don't want to waste a lot of time just sitting there negotiating when you could just be playing and having fun. All right, large monsters. We have made, quote again, uh, we have made our frozen horror fit a two by two square space to give you a proper threat for your dungeon. Zargon should inform the heroes that the frozen horror can squeeze down those small corridors if they think they can use its mythic proportions to their advantage. Okay, so this was a something, this was a difficulty introduced by this version because the frozen horror originally, his uh, figure took up two, two squares. So he could still like surfboard down the single square hallway they've made him double size just like the dreadnought so now in space crusade they made the corridors really wide and the doors really big to compensate but they're just saying yeah you just pretend he can just squeeze through the door it doesn't matter so that makes sense so i guess that'll be the rule moving forward for large monsters makes sense monsters with multiple attacks polar war bear a hero attacked by a monster with multiple attacks gets one defend roll against that monster per turn, no matter how many of the monster's attacks are directed at the hero. A hero can wait to see the result of the first attack directed at him, at them before deciding if they wish to roll defense against that attack or save their defense roll for a potential second attack. Okay, this solution I don't think really does much to help the players. I think the original, the 1992 published version was a little confusing because it didn't really tell you like how it worked. Are you supposed to like the monster rolls an attack, then you roll defense, then it rolls an attack again, and the second one is unblockable? Is that how it works? Are you supposed to roll at the end your defense and defend everything? Or what if you get some extra white shields more than the enemy had skulls? Do you can you apply that to the second attack? Is that how it works? So what they're saying is as the hero, you pick which of the two attacks you get to defend against. Because, yeah, it's understandable if the monster decides to attack a two adjacent heroes, it's it's fine. Both of them would roll defense as normal. But if he focuses both his attacks on one hero, now the question is, does he get to defend against both attacks? Before the Frozen Horror came out, you would have assumed the answer was yes. Just like when you use the Heroic Brew, which allows a hero to attack a monster twice. I mean, he could attack two monsters or the same twice. Uh, Orcs Bane, you could attack two orcs or one orc twice. We just assumed every time you attack, they get to defend. That's just how it normally works. Every attack gets a defense, except like in a few cases where like a magic spell or a trap. Sometimes you don't get to defend in those cases, but usually you get a, a roll. So this still the polar war bear is going to be extremely powerful if one of those two rolls is unblockable. Let's say, for example, he attacks a hero, rolls four dice, and he only gets one skull. The hero's like, mm, uh, okay, I'll roll defense. So they roll their six dice because they could have six dice with a lot of armor. 
and they get six white shields. Okay, so they block that one skull. Now, under these rules, the war bear would attack again, and he would roll four dice, and oh, look at that, he got four skulls. The hero can't block any of those, because none of those are extra white shields he rolled earlier count. So I don't think that's a very good way to do it. I mean, it certainly helps Zargon. It makes that monster really powerful. I mean, those war bears are nasty. They get the two attacks, and they have six body points. Now, there aren't a lot of them, but yeah. Um, the way that the designers, again, from the draft notes that Luke Apache acquired, what they were working on was to say it's a rule clarification across the board. So it works for both heroes and monsters. So when you ever you have multiple attacks, uh, the victim of the attacks rolls at the end. So the war bear would roll once. Okay, he rolls four dice. Let's say he got one skull. He rolls another four dice. Okay, he gets four skulls. So it's a total of five skulls towards that target. Now the target rolls his six dice. Oh, look, he got six white shields. He blocked everything. That's how it would do it. But it would also be true that if you were attacking a monster with your heroic brew or your um, orcs bane or I think the potion of speed that the elf uses in the elf quest pack. And I think there might be potion of battle rage. See, I always forget. I always, I, without looking it up. But yeah, there's like a few different ways to do multiple attacks against monsters. It's much more common for the heroes to do it. So it would make the hero heroic attacks much more effective um, in that case. But anyway, um, I, I just think that approach was better than this. This definitely clarifies, but I think it could have been better. It still maintains the difficulty, though. Mind points. Okay, continuing on. As long as a hero has zero mind points, they are in shock. If the hero later regains mind points, they are no longer in shock. Okay, I like this. This is simple. It's easy. Because the 92 published version, it didn't really clarify whether you can get out of shock mid-quest. I mean, you assume that your mind, your mind points, just like your body points, return in between quests. So obviously you'd be back to normal but during the quest even if you restored mind points it wasn't clear whether you'd be out of a state of shock because you're really weak when you're in shock one movement die one attack die and i think we lost connection okay all right sorry about that uh we are back yeah so the the clarification about mind points i think it, we so some of us just kind of assumed that you could get your mind points back and get out of shock makes sense it's the simplest solution um in discussions about the unreleased quest packs we were thinking well maybe it's more like body points like when your body points run out in the north american version you're dead you're dead um but if you have a healing potion or an unused healing spell and you haven't used up your action on your turn you automatically use it and you come back from zero because you can't go negative and you're alive again you're okay and so the thought was well maybe the mind points are the same way so if something damages your mind points that would put you to zero to go into shock the only way you could get out of it is if you had something that healed your mind points that you could use right away right then and there and then you just come out of shock but other than that it was like oh there's no way to do it and you just gotta kind of stagger around until the next quest so I think this is definitely much more forgiving. It's much more easy and much more obvious. Now this uh, this other clarification, I didn't really know that it was necessary, but here it is, ice tunnel. If a hero or monster lands on an ice tunnel space that is occupied, move the occupying character to an adjacent space of their choice. Okay, so I guess originally you could, you could grief somebody by just like parking your figure on top of the ice tunnel and nobody else can travel through until they get out of the way. I guess you you have to use up your Veil of Mist spell. I mean, if it's a unfriendly target. So now you, you can push them out of the way, but of their choice. So I guess you get to move the other guy. So it's not like he gets to choose where he gets pushed to. You just push him out of the way. So anti-griefing measure. 
So anyway, um, all right, now this next section is is interesting, playtest rules. Now it's very humble of them to call them playtest because they're right off the bat saying that um, they're not saying that this is right or wrong. They want you to try it out and see if it's good or not. Um, that's pretty cool. And encouraging you to, well, maybe if you find out another solution, you could do it yourself. But they ask for feedback. They don't just say, like, if you don't like our rules, just be quiet about it. They're saying, tell them. So we know that there's a lot of lurking um, Avalon Hill team members, um, designers, uh, marketing people. I mean, uh, it really is a team effort. From what I've gathered, from what I've heard, um, yeah, that could be a whole topic in itself about how like games are not just made by one person. I mean, even even though you may have one person associated with them, a famous person, there's all kinds of people behind the scenes, you know, throwing out ideas, editing stuff, writing stuff, painting and designing and, you know, putting the stuff together and uh, marketing it, testing it. I mean, there's so much, you know, doing the art. There's so much that goes into it besides just the people that think of the ideas or promote it or, or whatever. It's a collaboration. So if you run into anybody from there or just post on Twitter, I don't like to post on Twitter, but yeah, Zargon on Twitter is the uh, Hasbro one and then the Avalon Hill official Twitter. Um if you post in Discord, somebody may see it. I mean, they're, they're out there. They're listening. They're watching. And I think that's a great thing. I appreciate that they're doing that because you never know how these companies do things and what they're allowed to do. You know, their different contractual obligations and confidentiality agreements. Um, they do what they do. And we're kind of a niche product. You know, HeroQuest is not as big as Star Wars or G.I. Joe or Transformers these days. So... On the one hand, we can't really expect them to like bend over backwards to meet our every whim, but it is cool that they're actually listening and participating because they want our business, and so that's what they do. So go ahead and share your opinion. You know, that's that's what they want. They're asking for for feedback. So the playtest rules: unthreatened movement. If no monsters are active on the game board, you may decide to move in an unhurried way. Instead of rolling, you may treat each red die uh, you would have rolled to move as if you had rolled a four. Okay, so if it's two red dice, then you get to move eight squares. One, it's four. I guess if it's more like Swift Wind, it would be 16. <laughs> yeah. So I guess one theory, and I think this might have been Amalgamash who said this, was, well, you're still competing for treasure and stuff between the four heroes, so you still get to have a little bit of um, difference. I don't know. I might up it to four if it were me. Or, I mean, from four to five. I would up it to five. So two dice would be ten. Um, or I what I've what I've been doing is just you get your full movement. So if it's one red die, like you're wearing plate armor, it'd be six squares. Uh, normal, you get two, two, so it's uh, 12. And as soon as monsters appear on the board, then back to rolling. But, I mean, rolling for movement is fun. But it's it's a nice idea. So rather than getting rid of it entirely, you're just saying in certain circumstances. Okay, animal allies. Animal allies are faithful companions who can be recruited at no cost to accompany a hero on a solo quest before the quest begins. And this text is repeated later in the rest of the document. A hero may also recruit an animal ally to join them on a group quest if there are fewer than four hero characters. An animal ally is a new type of hero character who is controlled by the player who recruited them. The ally moves and attacks immediately after the turn of that player's hero. A hero can control only one animal ally at a time. Okay, so that would mean you could have three heroes, the dwarf, the elf, and the barbarian, and they could each have an animal ally because it's less than four, so based on this. An animal can move, attack, and defend as any hero can, but they can take no other actions, such as opening doors. Well, opening doors is a free action, but anyway... The ally does not receive any treasure. They cannot use or carry equipment, artifacts, or other items unless it is explicitly stated that those items are intended for them. So it's actually similar to mercenaries. 
um, or men at arms in the game. As an action, any hero can administer one of their potions to an animal ally in an adjacent square as long as neither character is adjacent to a monster. So I picture like the wolf like lapping up a healing potion. Now they say one, so I guess you can't like administer like five different potions. I would assume they have to use it right away. If a hero dies on a quest, any animal ally recruited by that hero continues the quest, controlled by the fallen hero's player until all non-ally heroes are defeated. Non-ally heroes, I assume they mean the allies are the animals. The heroes are the dwarf, elf, barbarian, wizard, etc. Ally, animal, wolf. So movement 10, attack 3, a wolf may attack diagonally. Defend 2, body 5, mind 1. That's pretty good. I mean, 3 attack is, is good. 2 defense is not that great, but 5 body makes up for it. I mean, that's pretty that's pretty good. It's middle of the road. Mi 1 mind, they're going to be very vulnerable to magic or magical type puzzles, but those are pretty rare. So, yeah. All right, now here's another uh, big part. A lot of people were excited to see this. There's actual cards to cut out. So you print this out and cut them out. And a lot of fans have done stuff like this, but this is the first time I've seen an official one do this. I guess some of the European ones had, but I think they were just references. You weren't actually supposed to cut them out. Um, the North American um, Keller's Keep and Return to the Witch Lord, like the back cover of the quest book, you were supposed to either cut them out which a lot of us did. So if you buy it on eBay, it's like the, the back cover is missing. What happened? Well, they cut out the cards with scissors or you're supposed to photocopy them. Well, nowadays we've got, you know, color printers and scanners. So it's a little different, a little easier. But with the remake, their tendency has been to, yeah, they'll show copies of cards for like the alchemist shop and artifacts at the back of the quest book, but then they'll give you actual full size, full size cards. So, yeah, I can't wait to print these out. And it says clearly here, not for resale, permission granted to print or photocopy for personal non-commercial use only. So that was nice of them. All right, so here are quests. Raymond to the Frozen Champion. So that, they tied it into the story. That's cool. Centuries ago, a hero possessing four powerful artifacts found the fortitude to banish the ancient evil known as the Frozen Horror to an icy tomb. See, it's always that way. Like, Zargon got defeated, now he's back. The Witch Lord got defeated, now he's back. The, the Frozen Horror got defeated, now he's back. You know, you're the heroes. Generations of heroes have to rise up to defeat the evil in their generation. Okay, cool stuff. Very epic, heroic, legendary. Okay, now these instruments of power have found their way into Zargon's sorceress clutches. Zargon, hide these artifacts with your most deadly minions inside the frozen, the hero quest frozen horror quest pack, lest they once again fall into the hands of those who will wish to usurp your power. These cards can be cut out and added to your hero quest frozen horror quest pack. Very nice. So there, once again, they're not holding your hand. They're just telling you um, this is what you could do. So you could say you kill a monster. And, oh, he left this artifact behind. Or you throw it into a previously empty treasure chest. Hide it behind a bookcase. You know, whatever. So I think that's great. And you, again, you can vary the difficulty. People are having too tough of a time. You put these out early. Whatever. You know. Okay, so... Let's just look at this. So this is really a hero card. Wolf is a faithful animal ally. They can be recruited at no cost to accompany a hero on a solo quest before the quest begins. A hero may also recruit an animal ally to join them on a group quest if there are fewer than four hero characters. So just like they said. So you get a nice picture of the artifact card back there. Playtest rules animal allies. So this is just a repeat of before. Here's the wolf. Nice artwork there. Kind of reminds me of uh, the giant wolves or the werewolves from the Elf Quest pack, Mage of the Mirror. I wonder when that's coming out. No official word yet. Okay. So, movement 10, attack 3. Yeah, same exact stats as uh, before. So, going back to these four artifacts. So, let's look at each one. So, the Ice Queen Spear. See, 
The spear was a weapon that you had in the European version. It was two attack, and it can attack diagonally, and you could throw it, but it was lost when thrown. I forget how much it costs in gold, but it wasn't in the North American version. But we kind of got it back in the sense that the Mythic tier had the dragon spear. That was only if you got the Mythic box. And so we lost it. But then now we get it again as the Ice Queen spear. So it doesn't say you can throw it, but this bejeweled spear allows you to attack diagonally with this well and adjacently too i assume with the attack strength of two combat dice or three if attacking a polar war bear may not be used by the wizard now you might ask yourself why would i ever use this because a long sword attacks with three no matter what type of monster i'm attacking and has the diagonal ability well remember that the rust spell the dread spell formerly chaos spell can destroy helmets and swords, but it can't uh, harm artifacts. So this would be immune to rust. So there's that. Now rust is pretty rare, but still. And anything to help you in your battles against war bears is a good thing. But yeah, if if there's no um, if there's no dread sorcerers around, might as well use the long sword. Uh, it's just as effective. Still, though, it's kind of a cool idea. It's too bad the wizard can't use it. Uh, cold Iron Plate Mail. Armor. This magical metal armor gives you two extra defend dice, and ice gremlins will not steal from you. However, because it is so heavy, you may only roll one red die for movement while wearing it. May be combined with a helmet and or shield. May not be worn by the wizard. Okay, so it doesn't say you can combine it with the bracers. Notice that. Now, there is a picture of a helmet in, the, in there, but they clarify. So, really, this is identical to plate armor, except it's free if you find it. You don't have to. I guess you could sell off your plate armor if you find this or give it to another hero. But outside of the icy context with ice gremlins, it's going to be just like regular plate. So, the rare, hard to find exclusive Guardian Knight figure who has no penalties for wearing armor could wear this and still have his full movement. So if you've got them, you can do that. So that's, I mean, that's kind of a cool idea. Because the, 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 according to the base rules, the Ice Gremlins can't steal the, the weapon out of your hand or the shield that you're carrying, that you're using. Can't steal the body armor you're wearing. But anything else they can steal. So they could rip the helmet off your head. They could take, you know, your artifacts. They could take one artifact, a potion. Apparently they could take all your gold, I guess, in a single bag maybe. I don't know. And they run away with it, and if they move out of line of sight, they're removed from the board and your stuff is gone. And the only way you can get it back is if on a the same or future quest you find their like loot room. It's like the special room tile. And everything that's been stolen up until that point is hidden there. So there are opportunities to get your stuff back, but yeah, it's annoying. So one character basically becomes immune to theft. It's kind of cool. Now you can't run fast, but at least they can't uh, take your stuff. This next one I really like because, so as I mentioned, they did double the number of mercenaries, which would cost 900 gold to hire all of them, all 12. In the original, it would have been 450 because there was only six figures. And of course, they just did that for convenience because they didn't have the interchangeable weapons to do that and so forth but anyway the war horn of command a symbol of leadership from a forgotten time it still holds influence among those who call themselves warriors if a mercenary controlled by a hero who carries this enchanted war horn survives a quest they will rejoin that hero in exchange for gold coins equal to half of their normal fee so you get a discount i like this because Prior to this, so when mercenaries were first introduced in the European expansion known as Wizards of Warcar, in that one you got a discount if your mercenary survived the quest. And they were really weak, so it was really a big deal for them to survive a quest. But you got a big discount. And there was a treasure card you could find called a Potion of Charm, which gave you a discount when hiring new mercenaries. Well, in the in the 1992 Frozen Horror, they didn't give you any discount. So it was kind of like encouraging you to treat them as cannon fodder and just use them up because if they 
got killed and you hired a brand new one, or if you they survived, you had to pay them the same amount. So what what difference does it make? Well, with this, this would encourage you to keep them alive because hey, you get a discount, and you really could have just one hero spend 900 gold to hire all 12 mercenaries. And yes, Zargon can still put bad guys on the table if evil mercenaries are called for. He just has to substitute a monster of similar strength. And it really is a substitution. So he could hire all 12 of those mercenaries. And if they survive all 12, then he would only have to pay 450 gold to carry them into the next quest. Because, I mean, you're really going to need those guys later on. So, yeah, it's kind of a cool thing. And if he gets killed, well, his army keeps on going. All right, Spiked Shield. Armor. This shield gives you one extra defend die. A yeti will not grab and hug a hero wielding this bladed artifact. May not be used with the battle axe or the staff. May not be used by the wizard. So this to me, once again, similar to this uh, cold iron plate. Outside of the context of the frozen horror, it's just going to be a regular shield. So it's kind of like sell your shield back for half price to the armory because this is better. And I like how it's got that design of the uh, the antlers on the front. That's kind of cool. Because these spikes on the side, you think, really wouldn't do much. So yeah, I, once again, don't use the Yeti hug on the, on the solo quests. And then afterwards, you can still have a hero that's immune because they have this. Well, and then the other thing is, well, I guess they make it sound like there's only one of each of these. But if you're Zargon, you could... You could maybe uh, make it so everybody's immune to every special ability. So, yeah, those are some nice additions. I like that. It feels like they really sat down and decided to get creative and put this in there. So if you're feeling like this quest is just kicking my butt, it's, uh, it's unfair. Here's some cool ways to make it a little bit more forgiving. Because it really, it's not just a matter of get good. Like, if anybody wants to say that, please don't. Because Keller's Keep, Return of the Witch Lord are tough quests. And there's some moments where it's like, man, they, that was really cheap. They just got us there. I'm thinking of the time that they destroy your artifacts. Or when that boulder just runs everybody over. Um, or you, you meet a bad guy and you can't kill him. It's just like, dang. You just have to run. So, there's definitely some hard parts. But compared to this those are cakewalks those are easy easy quests so even if you've built up gear i mean you really need everything you can get otherwise it just feels more like luck it feels like random and you know you could say hey someone can just replay the quest until they've memorized it perfectly and then then they win just like memorizing a video game an old school video game but that's not how it works because Zargon is supposed to remix, change the quest around when, if it's replayed. So if the hero dies or he runs away and goes back the other way through the exit, uh, you know, to escape and then replays it, you don't lay it out exactly the same. You're supposed to change it up. So that tactic doesn't really work, you know. If you're doing it right. And if you're playing and peeking at the quest map, it's like, what's the point? So one thing that they did not address is the blind trap jumping mechanic. And that was, again, something that I was getting from the, the draft notes. They were talking about doing it, but they didn't actually put it in the final version in 1992. Which was to say, you, normally, to jump a trap, you have to search for traps first and find out a square is dangerous. Then try to jump over it. So if you have enough movement to get to the other side, you roll up one combat die. And if it's a skull, you fall in and take the consequences. Unless you have the rabbit boots, which you could find in Return of the Witch Lord. And then it's just anything but a black shield. But that's just one artifact that one person could have. So that's how it normally works. Well, what they were saying is, how about this? Any hero at any time can say, I want to jump that square and just point to any square on the board that's within range to Zargon and do the roll as if they're jumping over. They don't know if there's a trap there or not. And what that did is it made it a little easier because there's no defense against a trap on the other side of an open door. Because when you search for traps, you search the room that you're in. 
and that would reveal where the trap is and then you could either try to disarm it or try to jump over it disarming it you need the toolkit or need to be the dwarf or in this case the scout you can hire a scout to do that but if you if you're if the trap is on the other side of the door it's in another room you can't reach into the other room to search and you can't reach into the other room to disarm you have to be you know what i mean like there's no way around it you just stumble into it so every open door is like another opportunity to stumble into a trap and it looks like in these uh, there's a few cases in the in the frozen horror and then there's more cases in mage of the mirror where they put not one but two traps outside the door so it's like you jump over one and land on the other so it's like they were already assuming you were going to do that so they created the counter and then the counter to the counter so anyway in my homebrew rules i use the the blind trap jumping mechanic because if you fail and you land on that square maybe you were wrong maybe there was no trap there and zargon's like and <laughs> like nothing happened um but if you land on it you take the consequences so anyway i think the the blind trap jumping i don't think that's too hard to understand and i think there's room on here they could have added that i mean a lot of there's a lot of empty space with like cool artwork and stuff i think they could have added that and that would have been like you know one more percent in their favor but this is pretty good i mean if they had not released this at all i would have been kind of upset and kind of worried for their profit margin because i would imagine a lot of people buying being super excited buying the um frozen horror sight unseen and then being confused by it and thinking like oh okay so i guess these quests are broken and i just need to make it up myself and fix it myself and just make another adventure out of it i mean it's cool to have new miniatures and stuff but it's too bad these you know these quests with all this potential like don't work except like one percent of the time you're gonna get lucky and make it through but with this in mind they're giving you options and they're setting you up to help yourself so like amalgamash was talking about it's like well you're zargon you can do whatever you want i'm not making fun of him i'm just I'm pointing out like I I used to make that same argument and I feel like I got a lot of pushback from people of just saying like you should expect the product to be working from the start I mean I know it's not like a video game where you have to code like your own patch to fix it you know it's a little bit of work anybody can just say Zargon doesn't like something he can just say ah uh, yeah it doesn't work like that it works like this now like okay everybody has to accept it and when it's your turn to be zargon you do it your way but this way they're saying okay here's a fix and don't forget you're the master of the world you can do it how you want and this is a play test so it's not final and if you have more suggestions let us know so they're they're leaving it pretty open-ended and they're guiding you they're empowering you as the gm to make the game better and again, someone could push back on, on this and say, this is, a, you know, the critique is, oh, they're being lazy. They should have just fixed it. But again, I, I think they made this decision because they were walking that tightrope between people who, for whatever reason, you know, maybe good intentions or not, or just faulty memory, people were wanting it unchanged, which is good. And, you know, they say, if it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it what if it's broke <laughs> you know but there's people that didn't didn't want to change at all and then there's the fact that yeah people are going to fix it but they're going to fix it in different ways so notice how my homebrew fixes are different than their fixes so would i be maybe i what if i'd been playing this for 30 years instead of just for like the past year maybe i'm really really happy with the way i play and i'm i would be annoyed that they told me no that's wrong it's this other way you're supposed to do it you're not supposed to do these wrestling moves. You're supposed to just turn off the, the hug during the solo quest. I mean, I guess, but they were probably just trying to just avoid any drama with that and just say, here it is, untouched. You can enjoy it how it would have been back then. So you get that nostalgia buzz, even though chances are you never actually owned it or never actually played it back then. You just remembered it was available and you missed your chance to get it and now you're, it's there 
And then the next step, okay, let's admit that it's broken. Let's try to fix it. And here's a bunch of suggestions. So I was hoping that they would do this and they did. So not much else I can say. I just over and over, thank you, thank you, thank you to Doug Hopkins and everybody else uh, on the team who helped put this together. I don't know if they put in overtime to do this, but they deserve um, a round of applause for putting this out there. And I think we as fans need to just let everybody know, because I'm sure there's still going to be questions online. People are going to be like, man, these solo quests, why are they so hard? How are you supposed to you know, escape when this happens? And it go, boom, here's the download link. Get, I know you think it's just a solo quest, but there's an errata at the end. You know, Into the Northlands has it attached. In fact, what they ought to do, here's, here's a suggestion for you, Hasbro Avalon Hill. Take this document and attach it, append it to the quest book, the PDF for the quest book when the August 1st comes out. I mean, I guess Gen Con comes out the same week, but put that file right up in there so it's all one file. I mean, they did that with the uh, game system. They put the instruction booklet, the rule book, and the quest book together as one document. Um, it's all spoilers anyway. So they put it all as one document. So they could put this as one document with the eventual quest book. And then it would be all together. Yeah, you'd have to still print it to print this section out or just tell it to print the last. Uh, how many pages is it actually? One, two, three, four. Yeah, print the last four pages and then boom, you've got it. So that would be a good thing. But yeah, just to spread it far and wide. Let everybody know this exists. And at least it's a start. At least it's something. And, you know, some cool uh, little artifacts to make it more fun. So I think they definitely deserve praise for this. Because, let's face it, the, the people working on it now are not the people who worked on it in 92. As far as I know, I don't recognize any of the names. Uh, I'm not saying I know everything about the behind-the-scenes stuff, obviously, but... Um, that's my cue to uh, wrap this up. Yeah, it's not the same people. So they inherited something, and it was obviously a property people were interested in. A lot of people would have bought this back in the day, and they might have hated it, for all we know. They might have uh, disliked it back then. But the fact that they didn't get it meant that there was a lot of anticipation. It's like, okay, finally, after 30 years, I get to try it. And so... They put that like padded uh, mattress so to catch you <laughs> after you fall and you can bounce back and uh, enjoy it. So anyway, kudos to them. So I like this. I'm excited. And if this if this had not been done, I would have been really down on them. I would have thought, oh, man, this is going to flop. This is going to possibly sink the franchise. And maybe we maybe Hero Quest will be still sold in the stores. But I wouldn't expect a lot of investment in other expansions after that because why would they make mage of the mirror if this was a flop now it hasn't been officially released yet that's august 1st <laughs> so people that are getting it now i guess will be the the beta testers but i mean they get to test out these new rules i expect to see it in the app and the app is still pretty much on the honor system so the app really wouldn't have any major changes i don't think you just keep this stuff in mind when you're playing. Because all the app is doing is taking the place of Zargon. So anyway, I'm sure this will come up on the rant cast. So Amalgamash and I will be talking. And Strange Bus will be talking. And it should be a good time. So thanks everybody for watching and listening. Sorry about the sound issues. I was a lot more fired up when I did the first one. But it just, you know, it had that echo effect. And it was, it was crazy and all over the place. So... Just acknowledge the strange bus. Yeah, thanks for the sub. I appreciate that. Um, Major Asnable. Yo, am I the only one on? Is this the day you guys play? Actually, no. T usually we play on Saturday. Alexis the Nexus. wonder if that's a real person or a bot. <laughs> I've banned so many bots lately. I'm just like every person that joins. It's like, oh, man. 
Are they a bot or not? Well, anyway, I appreciate the support, everybody. Thank you for everyone who follows. Thank you for everyone who subscribes, especially. Subscribing is cool. I think gifting subscriptions is really awesome when people do that. So, yeah, thank you for that. But, yeah, definitely go check out the Strange Bus. Uh, he and I should be talking in a couple hours here. But, yes, yeah, normally Saturday, uh, 6 p.m. to around 10 p.m., Central Standard Time US is when we play on Her HeroQuest fans on Twitch live on Twitch. We play HeroQuest. We've also played, well, I have not played the Space Crusade with anybody yet. I played it against myself. Um, I think one person expressed interest, maybe two, one or two people expressed interest in playing Space Crusade. Obviously, with the name, you think, okay, it's mostly HeroQuest fans. Uh, we've also done the those choose your own adventure style. Hero Quest books that Dave Morris wrote. Those were a lot of fun. Uh, but let me just respond. Okay. Well, thanks everybody for joining us on Hero Quest fans on Twitch, and the replay will appear on YouTube uh, within 24 hours. And the rant cast is going to be starting 9 p.m. Central Standard Time on the Strange Bus on Twitch. Should be a good time. And then we're having our bonus rant cast on Tuesday, July 12th, uh, 6 to 7 p.m. Central Standard Time with special very special guest amalgamash that should be a blast so i'm really excited i've been asking him for a while i've always enjoyed our collabs uh well we've done one and i enjoyed that and i was just i can't wait for the next one so yeah i'm really excited for that always fun to collaborate with the strange bus i give him a hard time sometimes but he works hard uh he really does a lot and he's the one that uh, kind of reeled me into this rant cast and I've never regretted it. It's It's been great. So we're gonna definitely going to be talking a lot of Hero Quest and some Star Wars and some other things, some movies that we do. So definitely check it out and everybody uh, will see you, see you later. Okay, and that's the alarm. Yeah, I had to set the alarm because I'm like, man, I'm just going to just keep on talking. I'll think of something else to talk about and I'll never get done. All right, catch you next time. Bye.